When was the last time you heard music? Was it in a shop where it was on the in-store radio and you were focused on something else, which was buying what you needed? Or was it in a car where you were listening with one ear but having a conversation with another? Or maybe on your phone where you were kind of focused on what was coming through the phone but also focused on talking to a bunch of people in the room? Or maybe, just maybe, it was at a gig. And at that gig, there was a band on, and a quarter or half the room was talking, or filming the gig with footage that they'd probably never look at again. I was at a gig with two friends named Rocky and Dave. This was back a few years. And the band was the Friendly Fires. I don't know if any of you have heard of them, but they're a really loud band. It was here in London, in Soho, not far from here. Even though they're loud, we couldn't hear them all that well because everybody was talking. And not really about them, about other stuff, about work. And the bar was open, strangely. And you could hear the clanging of the beer bottles as people were taking and putting down their bottles. There was also the ubiquitous phones up. Everything was just not right. So the three of us kind of looked at each other and said, hey, this is not OK. We love music. But the music seems to have become background noise. And Dave said, yeah, I'm a musician. And it's soul destroying to be up on a stage where I'm only playing for 20 minutes. I'm unknown. And yet, People are not focused. They're not in the moment. The music doesn't really matter. So we left. We went to Dave's house. We invited about 10 people to come and just listen. We brought drinks. We put the drinks down. We focused on his music. And it was so quiet, we literally could hear a clock ticking. Now, putting on a house concert, which I guess is what this was, is nothing new. It's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years, since Mozart's time, and probably before that. But for us on the night, it was new, and it was magical. So we did another one, and a third one. And this one in Regent's Park, there was a line down the block. And we looked at each other, and we're like, what is going on? Why are all these people here? We really had only told a few people. On that night, we realized there are a few other people who believe the same thing we did, which was, it's not OK to not focus on art. You can see my head in the picture. I'm, I'm above the head of the guitarist, the blonde hair. I was there. We crammed everybody in. And again, it was magical. So we kept doing about one a month. This was a hobby for a long time. By the time we decided to do one in another city to see, hey, what do people in New York think of this? We did one, and it was the same thing. It was quiet. So we decided just to do one a month in a couple of cities. Only a simple rules. Please focus on the music. Three acts, and maybe most importantly, we didn't announce who was playing. Kind of crazy. Why didn't we announce who was playing? Well, because we believed on the night, and then that all music and all musicians are equal. I don't believe in headliners. I believe we're all there for the same thing. But what happens during music is you come for your favorite act, and you talk through the other acts. Or you go in, and you leave, and you smoke, and you wait for the big act. For us, they're all equal. So to make a long story short, we kept doing this. And then we started hearing from people who had been to London or read about it somewhere, and they said, well, we'd like to do this too. This woman named Casey in LA called me and said, I want to do this. I want to do So Far in LA. And I said, do whatever you want. It's just a house concert. She said, no, you don't understand. I want to do it with you. I want to come together as a movement. Those points on that map are literally all the places, fast forwarding to where we got to, all the places around the world where this is happening. So this movement was about focus and really living your life in the moment, especially 
through music. Along the way, lots of fun things happened and continue to happen, but they happen because we're focused. I'm so focused on music, I don't really think of anything else when I'm at the event. So there was one night I was sitting next to a woman and waiting for the bands to go on, and I just said, hey, how's it going? She said, fine. I said, what do you do? She said, I'm an actress. I said, oh, that's got to be tough. Now, why did I say that? I just had dinner with another friend who was an actress who told me for an hour and a half how difficult it is to make it in acting. So I turned to this woman who I did not know, and while we were waiting for the band, spoke for about 10 minutes about my acting tips for her to break through without uh, understanding where she was in her career. She was very patient. She listened to me, kind of smirked, and then went to the toilet. And my friend Jody comes over to me and says, do you know who that was? I'm like, I don't know, some music fan who's trying to make it as an actress? That was Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> what an idiot. But the thing was, when you're focused and you're in the moment, you don't care. And I heard later from her friend who invited her that she was thrilled that I and others didn't make a big deal about her being there. Fast forward to Washington, DC. Musicians started coming to us and saying, this is great. You mean a night where we can focus and people focus on us? Even Ed Sheeran and his management said, we want to support up and coming acts. We'd like Ed to play to a room of 70 people. And on that night, we raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the refugee crisis. So there was a social cause connected to what we were doing. Part of the problem with the traditional gig is it perpetuates those issues of people talking and texting and all those crazy things that maybe some of you agree with me aren't OK. So when the government of Norway came to us and said, we've got a ski jump outside Oslo, and on the very top, you can put on a gig. We've been hearing about these living room gigs you're putting on, but how about here? We're like, OK. So we had a gig at the top of a ski jump, and it opened up our minds that it can be anywhere, that people can be in the moment, silent, where music really matters. So we did them at mattress stores in Manhattan, and churches, and carpet stores in Paris, and anywhere where we could have an event. For those of you who want to just get a tiny flavor of what the night's about, I'm going to play a, a video that goes about a minute and a half that just gives a flavor of what happens on the night. Gentlemen, welcome to SoFar Sound! How many of you have never been? This is your first time. Wow. Awesome, awesome. So it's really all about the music. And whether you're in Brazil or Berlin or here, this is about all music is equal. Let's enjoy it and hopefully you'll hear something you like. Today. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much. I've always believed that if you do something you love, good things might come and maybe one day you'll be able to make some money from it. I'd done this for five years as a hobby with no interest in money. And my wife, who's here, was looking at me spending 20 hours a week on my hobby and said, that's, that's about enough. We've got to you know, put food on the table. 
So that was the point where we turned the movement a few years ago into a business with a purpose. But when we did it, we made sure to hire people who had already been helping us build so far. The vast majority of the people working with us came from the community of folks who've been helping. And we sat down together and said, what do we want to be about? What are our values? And those values were the same things that we started with. So we're community-led on everything we do. We're inclusive. Everyone is welcome to play, to be there. And we're somewhere where we try to be humble, meaning we just try to be open to feedback. There's more to it, but just to give you a flavor. Most importantly is the community of people who also agree that music matters and that we should focus. It doesn't make sense the way I was talking about before. The weird thing that happened that we never really expected is that people come together and they're there for one thing, but then they're more aware of their surroundings. So often after the music stops and there's a break, people don't grab their phones, but they look around. And it's no surprise if you think about that, that people look around and a lot of people come are single and they flirt and I'm told that we've had up to 12 couples meet and get married at these nights and propose. So uh, hit me up if you ever want to see a video of somebody proposing, it's crazy. But the thing is, a coming together becomes something where you're more open to making new friends and to the world. The community also helps you police when things are not okay. I don't know if anyone here has been to or from Austin, great place for music. But we had some gigs a couple of years ago that were not okay. They were not within the guidelines of what we simply ask, which is that focus. The person leading it there was putting on music that wasn't so hot and was all her friends and was getting drunk and people were talking and it was, everything was not okay. So unbeknownst to me, somebody from Dallas got in a car, drove three hours, and had a hidden camera and filmed the whole thing, sent it to us and said, look, we had heard this was happening, this is what's happening. So we shut it down. We built back up in Austin, but that's the beauty of a movement and people who look out for each other and for the simple guidelines that you set. I'm gonna end up by two more slides, but first by just talking about the musician's perspective. I was recently in Chicago and the first band to play had driven five and a half hours from St. Louis. And they said that to be in a room where we had heard we will be with a hundred people who are just listening, that to us is worth a five hour or more drive. And for me, this is what we're surrounded with all the time, this sort of constant clatter and obsession with technology. But when you're in the moment and human, and when music, for those of you who love music, when music is center stage, it's very special for the artist as well. And I don't know how many of you are artists or know artists, but it, like I said before, it's just not okay to be performing. Also what happens is people open their minds and their hearts to what they're hearing. So really early on in their careers, we had people like Josie and Leon Bridges and Bastille and the National play. And then what happens is people remember. You may or may not remember when you discovered somebody online, but you certainly remember when you discovered somebody at a live event. And that's been a truly special coming together of this community. Final thought. When people come together for a movement, they like to be together physically and travel around the world if they can. And what happens is people, when they're in different cities, they hang out with people they've met through their association with music. It's a picture of me hosting in New York. And oftentimes on these events, we will just ask, hey, where have you been? Have you ever visited one of our nights somewhere else? And on this particular night, I said, raise your hands if you've been before. And half the room, arms went up. And I said, somebody in the back, where have you been? And he said, Chicago. Pointed another one, where have you been? She said, Istanbul. Finally, I said, one more, and I pointed to somebody right in the front row. I said, where have you been? And this was in lower Manhattan. And she said, well, Rafe, I've 
happened at your house back in London. Wow. And afterwards, she pulled me aside and said, it's beautiful to be in any space where art and where music matters. Thank you.